All right, thank you folks. Appreciate that. Appreciate you all being here tonight. We're going to talk tonight a little bit in our <clears throat> series on prayer about a subject that we as Baptists would just soon pass on, and that is fasting, because we as Baptists have to happen to be big fans of food, and normally when we are fasting, we are giving up food. Um, you know, a lot of times we may say, I wish I had the patience of Job, I wish I had the faith of Abraham, I wish I had the, I had the boldness of Peter, I wish I had the courage of Esther and David, I wish I was a prayer warrior like Daniel. But folks, be careful what you aspire to be like, because if you look throughout Scripture, the greatest of, of, of saints and biblical characters made a habit of fasting. Jesus, we know, fasted for 40 days in the wilderness when he was to be tempted by uh, the devil. We know that Moses fasted for 40 days on Mount Sinai. We could name uh, David and Ezra and Nehemiah and Barnabas and Jehoshaphat and uh, Esther and Paul, just to name a few who took part of this process of prayer, this special uh, process called fasting. It was a, a, a different way of communicating with the Lord. Now, yes, we're still praying, and, and no, nothing supernatural is happening in that prayer, but it is a more intense way of reaching the Lord. And here's what I want you to leave with, if nothing else this evening. You will not find one time, if I'm not mistaken, you will not find one time in Scripture where someone prayed and fasted and did not receive an answer to prayer. A lot of times you and I, we sit here and we pray and we pray and we pray, but we don't get an answer. You do a study on those in the Bible that fasted, they got an answer. It may not be the answer they wanted, but they got the answer. And so we want to look just for a few minutes tonight at, at uh, fasting. Not only did the Lord teach His disciples about fasting, He expected them to fast, just as He expects you and me today to fast. And all God's people shouted, Amen. You know, the truth is, folks, if I were to do a survey and ask you, when was the last time you fasted? Some of you probably could not even raise your hand to say that there was a first time. And let me be unbelievably and brutally transparent with you. It's been a long time since I have fasted. But folks, can I tell you something? We are missing an incredible opportunity when we have a prayer that we want answered, but we fail to fast. Because the whole process of fasting is a more intense way of getting God's attention and to let Him know that we are very, very serious about the petition we are taking before Him. And so, when we think of fasting, the only restriction that I can find in Scripture when it comes to fasting is that we be very, very sincere about what we're doing. And we're, we're also to make sure that we are not to look like we've been fasting. We're not to come in here and walk like, act like, talk like, pout like, mope like, oh, I'm fasting. No. We're not to look any different than we normally do. God wants it to be very sincere. He wants it to be very, very normal. It should not change our countenance. It should not change our attitude for the worse. God never stipulated in His Word. There's nowhere in Scripture where you will find how long a person would need to fast. And let's be honest, there are different avenues of fasting. For most of us, 99% of the time, it would be giving up uh, physical food. 
For some, it might be uh, giving up sleep or, or whatever is uh, of, 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 of importance to you that you have to have on a, uh, a daily basis. But God never gave any kind of stipulation on, on how long you should fast. That's between you and the Lord. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to give you an attaboy if you fast for one meal. Now, some of you will say, I can't skip meals, health reasons. I'm not even going to go there, okay? That's between you and the Lord. But if you're going to fast, fast. If it's, if it's that serious to you, fasting for one day, skipping three meals is not easy. But I would dare say it's very doable for most of us. And it's, you know, I, I, I will tell you, uh, the longest that I've ever fasted was five days. Mary and I did it together several years ago. I hear many people that fast for seven days, ten days. That's impressive. But you know what's impressive about that? Is to know that they have a very serious, deep prayer request that is so urgent to them that they would give up food for that long of a period of time. And so there is no stipulation on how long we fast, but that's, that's certainly between you and the Lord. Fasting should never be a boastful thing. It should never be a, a, a self-righteous thing. Uh, it should never be a flaunting of this um, new avenue that we have to the Lord when we're praying. And so very quickly tonight, we're going to get the Cliff Notes versions of, of this sermon because I know the weather is not real good and I want you to get home safely. But what is fasting and prayer? Quite simply, fasting is putting God above what is most important to you. And for most of us, eating is pretty important. Most of us would say, well, I just can't survive if I don't eat. Folks, Daniel would say, I can't survive if I don't pray. That may be the difference between us and the likes of Daniel. I must pray. And, and Daniel let nothing hinder that. There are times in our lives where we have something so urgent, something of, of, of such great intensity, that we need to hear so clearly and so powerfully from God that we will turn our backs on everything else that is important to us in order to get God's attention. Fasting is, is desperately seeking the face of God regarding the petition that you are bringing before Him. It's, it's, normally it is setting aside the all-important physical for the far more important spiritual. Now I'm not saying that every prayer we take to God is not important, but folks, let's be honest. There are needs, there are trials, there are circumstances uh, that come into our lives that are far more significant than others sometimes. And that is when we ought to institute fasting. It means a persistence in prayer. It means a deliberate clearing of our mind of everything else that is important to us so that God can see that we are very, very seriously. It is, it is, it is a God I'm going to keep coming to you without food. I'm going to skip breakfast and I'm going to pray the whole time. I'm going to skip lunch and I'm going to pray the whole time. I'm going to get supper and I'm going to pray the whole time. I'm going to not go to bed at 10 o'clock. I'm, I'm going to pray from 10 o'clock until 1 o'clock in the morning, whatever the case may be, because God, I need to hear from you regarding this matter. Answer it however you will, but I need to hear from you and I want you to see in my heart and in my life that this is important to me. It is a step up from our normal prayer life. Fasting pictures a, a greater desire, a greater urgency, a, a greater determination, a greater faith, if you will, 
Unfortunately, a lot of times I think our prayer is often a shallow thing. I believe it's a light thing. I believe it's an insincere thing. I believe it's in, uh, an in-passing thing. Folks, do you have any idea how seriously God takes your prayer life? Well, he's not kidding around. You know, I was, I, was, I was in my office the other day praying, and um, I fell asleep. Praying. I fell asleep. Now, it could have been because I found myself in a very comfortable position right after lunch. That's just not very smart. But God is sitting there, And I'm sleeping when I'm supposed to be praying. Folks, God takes that time, that special time between you and me very, very seriously. Folks, how seriously do you take your prayer life? Now, I don't think you're going to get judged or graded in heaven at the judgment seat on how many times you uh, partook of a fast. I don't think God's going to do that. Because the Bible says, when ye fast. So it's, it's not a required thing by any means that you've got to do it three times a, a week or three times a month or three times a year. But God gives us the opportunity to fast so that we can show Him how serious we are about taking our petitions before him. What are some things we can gain by fasting? Look at Psalm chapter 50, if you would, very quickly. What are some things that we can gain by fasting? Psalm chapter 50, and let's look at verse 15. We can find help in time of trouble. And isn't it funny? Many times in Scripture where someone was fasting, there was trouble a Bruin, was there not? Esther was about to lose her entire nation. Jehoshaphat was about to lose his people. Jesus was about to be tempted by the devil. There was always trouble a Bruin. But look at Psalm 50 and verse 15. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. We know that um, Joshua, when he had just had a successful victory in Jericho, then what happens? They've just conquered this towering walled city of Jericho. And then they go to the peons of Ai, and Joshua and his boys were cocky, And they said, we don't need God's help on this one. And they were soundly defeated. And so guess what Joshua did? He covered himself in sackcloth and ashes, and he repented before the Lord and said, help me defeat Ai. Because he had lost some of his fellow soldiers. And we know that Jehoshaphat, when he was facing the children of Ammon and Moab and Seir, he fasted. Because there was no way that Jehoshaphat's little army could defeat these three military bodies. And so Jehoshaphat fasted. And we also know that Ezra, when he was at the river Ahava, he was afraid of the enemy and what was going to happen, so he fasted. One of the things we can find by fasting is help in time of trouble. Another thing that we can find when we're fasting because we are upping our prayer life a degree. We might be able to find what's wrong in our life. We may find what's wrong in our life that is not pleasing to the Lord. Sometimes we as Christians, um, we, we, we have difficulty in our life trying to figure out, God, what is your will for my life? God, what is it you want from me? God, what is it I'm not doing? Fasting may just get you to that level where you might be able to see with a, a clear heart and nothing in the way where you, you are giving up food because you want God's attention 
And it just might be during that time of prayer that God might reveal something to you in your life that he would like to see an adjustment. There, there may be just, just enough abandonment of yourself when you let go of that physical important thing so that you can get God's attention where God just might reveal to you something that he's not pleased with in your life. Another thing, we can often find genuine repentance in prayer and fasting. You know, I think a lot of times we, uh, we kind of look at our sin the same way we kind of look at prayer. We're just kind of this way about it. We're just kind of nonchalant. You know, as, as we talked about this morning, uh, uh, God forgive me for this sin. This sin. God saying, what sin? You've got a bunch of them. Right? But we say, God forgive me for this sin. No. Just like we talked about with David, and just like we talked about this morning with Daniel, sin, wickedness, rebellion, transgression. David and Daniel saw sin for what it really was. Sometimes you and I, we just kind of sugarcoat our sin because it's not as bad as the guy sitting next to me. And a lot of times, I think our prayer life is the same way. We just kind of sugarcoat it. Well, maybe we could immerse ourselves in letting go of the physical so that we can focus completely on God and we can truly examine our lives and that we can shoot straight with the Lord in this time of fasting and prayer and say, God, I know this is a sin in my life. And I need your help to get rid of it. We might find that in fasting. It can give us the power to recognize that there may need to be a change in our attitude, in our heart, in our mind, and in our way of thinking. And fasting can give us victory over that sin. In, in, in fasting, we might be able to see the, the guidance and the direction of the Holy Spirit. Look at eight, uh, uh, Acts chapter 13, if you would, please. Acts 13, and let's start at the beginning of the chapter. We have here the calling of Paul and Barnabas by the Holy Spirit. All right, Acts 13, and let's start in verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Menean, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So, when these men fasted and prayed, the Holy Spirit gave them direction. You know, a lot of times we have our burdens, we have our needs, we have our trials, we have our circumstances, we have our issues, we have our prayer requests, and we go to the Lord, and, and He doesn't answer, and we wonder why. It's possible that God says, you're not taking this prayer request very seriously. You really don't want the answer because you aren't coming to me with all of the tools in your spiritual toolbox. And so a lot of times we pray and we don't get answers. Fasting is a, a, a wholehearted, sincere surrender with, with a fervency and with a, it, it's, it's just like when Jacob was wrestling with God. And Jacob said what? I will not let go. Folks, that is the emphasis of fasting. God, I am going to do whatever it takes to get your attention on this matter. And folks, again, let me encourage you 
to do a study on fasting because you will find every time in scripture where someone fasted for a need for a request because of a burden that prayer was answered now physical things happen if you fast for any length of time I'm going to warn you straight up your stomach if you fast for any length of time and you fast by means of giving up food your stomach will shrink and by about day two you're going to have a pretty good headache But guess what? We're not to show any of those things. How seriously do you want God to answer a need or a prayer or a burden? Folks, let me assure you, I don't know that fasting has ever killed anyone. Some of you have your health reasons. I understand that. But there's probably something else in your life if you were really serious about wanting God's attention, there's probably something else in your life you could give up in order to get God's attention. You know, the, the frustrating thing is for me is there have been times in, in my life where I have fasted. And God's always answered. He's always answered. The frustrating thing is there have been so many other times when I should have fasted. God doesn't want us to be hurting or struggling or suffering when we're fasting. But on the same token, it was not to be anything of convenience for you and for me. God wants to know how serious you are about having a prayer request answered. And folks, the promise is right there in God's Word. Look it up. They fasted, their prayers were answered. It may not be miraculous. It may not be the answer you want. But if you are so serious to go that far that, God, I am willing to give up something that is so important to me physically because I need to hear from you spiritually, you're going to get an answer. Because God takes no pleasure in seeing you and I as Christians praying, giving up food for a day or two days. He takes no pleasure in seeing you go through that with a sincere heart and then saying, you know, I'm not going to answer. He just doesn't work that way. So folks, let me encourage you and let me invite you that if you've got a prayer request, if you've got a burden, or if you've got a need, and it's not been answered for a while, why don't you take it up to the next level? Say, God, I want you to know how serious I am about this, and how much faith I am exercising in you.